Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to be finishing up the dartboard build and we're going to start out by measuring for the hinges on the original case. These I just set up by eye seeing what would look good based on the spacing and the size of the hinges and then I'm scribing the outside of the hinge so that I have a place to mortise. Just a thin knife line there to give my chisel something to go up to. Just like this, a three quarter inch chisel. Notch out the waist like that. And then that gives you the ability to really take those chunks out without too much effort. It's a pretty slow process, but it's one that gets better and better the more you do it. And they're just doing a test fit, making sure the hinge fits perfect. I'm drilling the set screws that'll hold it into the case, pre-drilling because they're very small screws going into hardwood. And I repeat that for all the hinges on the case, three on each side. Now I'm cutting the front panel in half so that I can lay them out on the case and transfer those marks over. I clamp the top onto the case like this and then I'm able to transfer those hinge locations to the top. Just showing a close up of that. I use my pencil line as a guide and then I usually start smaller and then I can widen them if need be. And I put the actual hinge back on to the face so that I can mark the how deep it'll go into that case onto that front panel. I'm gonna do the same process with notching out the bulk of the waist, giving my back knife line there, and then be able to come in and take those chunks out pretty easily, just at the depth of that hinge. A sharp chisel makes this job a lot easier and I often sharpen in between hinges or a few times during that process just to keep everything safe. And then test fitting that hinge the same as with the case making sure I have a tight fit. And I repeat that process for all hinges just as just the same. Now mounting it onto the case, I can screw in both sides and it gives me a functioning hinge with recessed mortised hinges. I decided to do my, my last name for the wrap around on this case. So I printed out a template at one to one scale so I can just put it right on the wood and cut them out on the bandsaw. Here I'm just trimming to make them fit a little easier on this piece of scrap I have keeping that grain consistent across. I'm just going to use some 3M77 spray adhesive and paste those right on. And then after they set up on there a little bit, they're easy to cut on the bandsaw or jigsaw, whatever you have. I start by taking a big cut here, removing a bulk of the waste. And then I can have smaller sections to cut across. This operation just removes a bulk of the waste and those finer adjustments can be made with sandpaper, files, whatever you may have. Here's all the letters put together. I left a bigger chunk on that O just because it's easier to sand that way. Here I'm showing the process for cutting the insides out. I match a drill bit size to the approximate size of the hole I'm trying to cut. And then I can come in with files or sandpaper and trim those out to round them out to, to the correct dimensions. 
I also use a chisel to get into those tight corners. It allows you to keep a nice straight edge. Same thing, this isn't the final procedure. There's some filing done to get the those perfect edges on the inside, but th this gets the bulk of the waste removed. And since the back won't be seen, you can undercut it to allow for easier sanding or filing. And coming through with a triangle file here, you're able to really get those edges clean. And I do a bunch more sanding off camera, but just, just to show the concept, this is all I'm showing in the video. Now taking it over to the sander here, allows me to get those rounded curves pretty easily and get a more consistent transition, filing right up to the line there. And then getting flat faces where I need them to be. The sander really makes short work of different woods, especially hardwood. And it makes the makes the job a lot easier. Now I'm taking it to the top belt portion to remove that leftover paper from my templates. That glue is very sticky. It can be peeled off, but with such small pieces, it's easier just to sand. And that helps me get a better finish. Now setting the pieces in, finishing up on that O, after removing all the templates, starting to come together and look like a dartboard case. This was the most ambitious portion of this project. I wanted to do a Celtic knot out of some the, the, the scrap walnut that I had left over. So here I'm just drilling holes in all the open spaces so I can use my scroll saw to cut out those inside shapes without taking the whole template apart. There was a lot of drilling and a lot of cutting and filing to get this to come together, but I'm very happy with the result. I started out with those big holes and then I'll come in later to do those smaller ones. But this is where the bulk of the this project was done was on the scroll saw. Cutting out all these intricate shapes. I start out just by making a bunch of relief cuts in the material so that once I start cutting that outside edge, those pieces fall out easier and it gives a finish, uh, an easier cut. And the same thing, this was just to remove as much material as I could, and then the rest was filed and sanded down to give that inside a better edge. Here you can see a better angle of those relief cuts and how they start to fall apart once you start cutting that outside edge and you just knock them clean. This way your saw doesn't bind up and you're less likely to break for you. This process was very tedious, but I'm, I'm glad that I worked through it. After getting all those cut out, I move it to files and sandpaper to sand up to my lines and remove any of the spots I may have screwed up. 60 grit sandpaper did a lot of removal, but I in some spots I needed the rasp, which I'll bring in uh, shortly here. Those really can remove some material, uh, get rid of the saw lines, and just help to refine those finishes to the profile you're looking for. There was a lot of filing and sanding on this portion which is why I was dreading this from the beginning. But once again, I'm glad I, glad I went this route and decided to challenge myself. Now I'm starting to do the actual carving portion of the knot and that I'm just using some various size straight chisels and notching out the edges where the knot wraps underneath itself. You can see the picture on the iPad in the corner there. That's the shape I'm going for. 
so this knot is complex in the fact that it wraps around itself. So I'm carving to get that effect in a single piece of wood. I marked all the high and low points just with a pencil, and then I'm going through referencing that picture back and forth just to get those initial cuts of where it wraps underneath itself. This is one of those projects that seems very difficult from the outset, but once you start going, there's so much filing and shaping that any small errors you might make along the way just get blended right in. So there that knot is after one pass, just with knocking off those high spots and defining those edges. And from there it gets refined and refined. This is jumping through time quite a bit. Like I said, there was a lot of shaping and filing and sanding. I'm just gluing and tacking in the letters and later the knot. I'm just using a little bit of glue and some uh, pin nails to anchor these into place. I used very little glue as I didn't want any squeeze out because I knew it would be very difficult to sand in and around those areas. So I used just a tiny amount of glue as these are just decorative, there's no forces or anything on them. And then those pin nails will just keep them in place while that glue sets up. Now I'm attaching the inside scoreboard here. I'm just kind of eyeballing and using my square to make sure I have a straight edge with whatever looks nice. Marking some of the holes so that I can pre-drill and put some screws in. With how thin this material was, it was very, all the holes that I had to drill, I had to be very careful not to poke through as uh, all the panels were about a quarter of an inch thick. Now I'm attaching the scoreboard with some screws here. I would have preferred brass, but the, the stainless is all I had in stock, so that's what I'm using for now. Checking my measurements to make sure I'm still good, and then I attach the other two sides. I'm going to attach the knot the same way. As I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of shaping and sanding, and I'm quite pleased with the final result. Especially after finish is applied, you can really see it pop. I'm just aligning it and using those pin nails in the high spots just to make sure I don't poke through. And that glue is plenty strong to keep this in place. I'm just getting all those open, unsupported edges. I'm going with the polyacrylic finish here, my favorite finish, just for its simplicity. It doesn't smell. You can do several coats in a day. And it's uh, water soluble, so you just can rinse with a brush. It always amazes me putting this finish on walnut, just the drastic change, just adding that finish does to the wood. And this one, this project was no exception. I brush really light coats, sand in between with 320 grit sandpaper and then end up building five or six coats up over a two days or so. As this dries so quickly, you can almost apply a second coat by the time you're done applying the first. It dries much quicker than polyurethane and it's, it's, it's just as durable on surfaces like this that you're not handling every day like a tabletop or desk. I show one coat just for just to show how the process is done, but I applied five or six over a few days. Now I'm gluing that bottom panel in finally. I put a coat of, I sealed it first because it's easier to get into the edges without having a back on. And it also helps protect it from squeeze out because it's easier to wipe the glue off that finished surface. You just have to make sure that that little ridge 
does not have finish on it as the glue won't stick to it. I just pop that back panel on, throw a few clamps on, and then let it sit overnight to fit fairly cure. And then I go back in and uh, put polyurethane on the spots that I had missed. Now I'm laying out for the dart holders. I made these off camera as they're just simple blocks. And I'm using tape because now that this surface is finished, it's hard to put pencil line on it. I'm just striking a line as I know I want to align with that hinge on the top and bottom. And then I put the actual blocks in place so I can match the height as I'm doing there, describing along. Then I come back in off camera to mark the left and right sides so I know where those cuts stop and end. And I label them top and bottom T and B as they are slightly different in thickness. Now similar to the hinges, I'm coming in with a knife first just to scribe my edges and break up those wood fibers on the top, bottom, left, and right. And that allows me to pull that piece of tape right out and I know that that's the, the line that I have to cut to. This was a very thin uh, dado cut that I did here as I just wanted it enough to recess in to give it something to adhere to. As this is just holding darts, there's not much forces on it. And those dart holders also serve as stiffeners to help those boards resist bending over time. So I make a few cuts, I'll go back in and test fit to make sure I'm in the right ballpark. Repeat that process until it's a nice fit. Now I'm using epoxy to put these in instead of wood glue, just as with it being such a small area and not that deep, I wanted the adhering power of epoxy. And since it dries clear, if I did have any squeeze out, it'd be easier to hide than using wood glue and sanding. Now with those pieces done, I just have to attach the dartboard to the case. So I'm going to start by drilling some holes from the front out to the back. Just locating the holes and then I can come through from the back to countersink those so the screws sit level to the surface. And then off camera I screwed that dartboard right through and was able to attach it. And here's the final piece hung up in the basement where we can place some darts. Thank you all for watching this video and being patient with the release. And if you have any other videos you'd like me to make, please let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.